Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of On Brand from Muse by Clio. I'm Nicole Purcell, the president of the Clio Awards. Before I bring out my co-host, Mr. Tim Nudd, we want a quick word from our partners at Salesforce. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Hi, Nicole. Happy Thursday. How are you? Happy Thursday. Love our Thursday discussions um, because closer to the end of the week. (laughs) I'm very excited for today um, talking to someone that has been on our Clio Entertainment jury. So that's always fun and a brand that everyone's talking about. Totally. Yeah. Today we have John Kohler. He's the VP of Global Marketing at Twitch. Uh, Twitch, of course, being the world's largest (laughs) live streaming multiplayer entertainment platform. Um, They've been growing like crazy during COVID, and they've also been expanding into new areas uh, long before the pandemic. Uh, And they're also doing very interesting things with brands also. So excited to welcome John Kohler. Hi, John. Hi, Nicole and Tim. How are you? Hey. We are good. How are you doing over there? Doing doing well. I appreciate the time. Definitely. What I love to start off with all the time, I like to get a little personal. And, you know, working from home has changed a lot of people's lives. Where are you living? Who are you living with? And how is it going? (laughs) It's going uh, surprisingly well. Um, I've got a family and three young kids who may run in this background at any point. So I hope so. Well, uh, (laughs) well, uh, yeah, you might get a guest appearance. Uh, They hear a lot about marketing through the day. Um, But uh, it's going well. You know, the thing about Twitch that, and, and we're part of Amazon, is that um, it's a virtual platform. So actually, right. it works better from home, in my opinion. I've been making this point to HR quite a bit. I'm like, we could all work well from home and probably be quite sustainable for some time. I know that's not the case for all brands, but for a virtual platform, it's what we are. So it's going well. We actually were going to ask you that, too. That's so funny that you brought it up. So like COVID hits and you guys are like, well, you know, we are virtual. This is something we're used to communicating in this way. It's easier, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. The thing about Twitch is that it's actually a, an inclusive home for communities. I mean, Tim, you were mm-hmm. mentioning at the beginning there. So the idea is actually to fulfill some of those needs that I think we all have during this pandemic where you're not around people a lot. There's, there is social distancing. I mean, Twitch fulfills those needs. You're, you're around like-minded people who share your passions. Like, I mean, it, it's it, and it shows in the numbers. I mean, anything, a lot of our numbers are public. You can see them. But I mean, the amount of hours watched on Twitch has essentially doubled in the last few months. And, you know, a yeah. lot of that's just because of people having the ultimate currency, which is time. We have more time on our hands. Yeah. John, I, I know, you know, a lot of people, I think everyone's heard of Twitch. Um, those of us <laughs> over 35, some of us don't know exactly what it is always. So I wonder <laughs> if you could kind of go back to the basics and just tell us, you know, explain the platform and kind of how it's evolved in the time that you've been there. Sure. Yeah. So I, I think many of you, certainly we're all about the same age, but um, they're back in the day, which was like 12 years ago, there was something called Justin TV. And Justin TV was essentially an individual named Justin Ken who decided to live stream his life and he put a camera in his house and said, you know what, let's just see if anyone's interested. Turns out people were interested, but they're mm-hmm. less interested in him cooking and more interested in him playing Call of Duty. And so um, the, the Call of Duty component of that, the game component of that became Twitch. And um, I interestingly was on the other side. I was the head of marketing at PlayStation for many, many years. Um, and at that time I brought the Twitch app to the PS4 and thinking like, oh, this live streaming thing, it might be kind of interesting for gamers. Turns out it's kind of a big deal. It's like exactly <laughs> what people yeah. really wanted. And um, so it has its roots in gaming. Um, the majority of hours watched is still in gaming, but there's a really like interesting diversity of content pieces and verticals that have sprung up. Um, everything from, you know, right now music's having a really big moment. So artists coming and performing for their communities. Um, Sports, we have Thursday Night Football actually, and you watch it in a whole different way um, Mm. on Twitch than you would on any other platform. Um, Food and drink, food and drink's really interesting. It's interesting that it wasn't as interesting back in 08, but now, you know, we've been doing these things where you give out half a recipe to a bunch of foodie creators and they come back with everything from a hamburger to a cake, you know? So like we do these really interesting things on all these different content verticals. So but while many people think it's about gaming, it's really about how you can share your passions with others. You had said earlier about during COVID, you guys have grown so much. So like, how big is your base? And 
how yeah. is the user experience going as it grew and how quickly, you know, from before to this time to grow? Yeah. Yeah. So the public numbers I'll give you. So last year, 2019, seems like an eternity ago. Um, yeah, it does. <laughs> doesn't it? it yeah. uh, we we're at 850 million hours watched per month. And now it's at 1.7 billion hours watched per month, um, which if you do the math is bigger than Netflix, Hulu, ESPN and HBO combined times two. So oh it's not big. We have 8 million channels. If you think of linear, linear uh, has, what do we mm -hmm. have, 500 channels of which we may watch eight of them, I think is the right. research. Yeah. We have 8 million on Twitch. And so there's something for everyone. You can think like, um, we <laughs> interestingly, this morning we announced Ninja's back. So Ninja, who many people may know, is kind of the face of live streaming, is back on Twitch as of this morning. And um, But it's not just someone like him. It's you, you find your people. You find your person. Mm -hmm. You find someone that you relate to. And it's just like friends, you end up staying together and the amount of time spent on Twitch grows because uh, you engage with everyone in that community and build together. And so it's different in many ways than you would find on other social platforms. You know, like Facebook um, is a little bit more, um, hey, I just like and you move on and it's really quick. Um, Instagram, same way. YouTube has a little bit more depth, but lacks some of that community. And so Twitch kind of really tries to bring in that sense of people, like that inclusiveness. That's, a, that's an important um, yeah. part of the brand. Okay. We'll get to, uh, you know, we'll get to consumer brands later and how you guys are engaging with them. But I would say, you know, it's interesting if you're if a brand marketer, I would say just jump on Twitch and spend an hour or two just going through it if you haven't. Um, but I wanted to talk to you, uh, John, a little bit about what you guys have been up to um, during COVID. Um, we have some footage from an event you guys put on called uh, Stream Aid 2020. Um, so let's have a quick look at that clip and we can chat about it. But I'm just happy that we're all coming together, but especially the ones in the music industry. Um, music really brings people together during a time like this. So the fact that we can come together and do something so fun like this and also sing and also play games and also see some of our favorite sports stars. It's a pretty cool thing to be a part of. And I'm, I'm grateful that I'm a part of it too. Stream Aid, we had the $2.5 million drop. Ladies and gentlemen, we hit a major milestone for the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. Uh, everyone should be celebrating uh, applauding, cheering. This is incredible. It's it's amazing. That's great. That so, yeah, so obviously, you know, a fundraiser sort of charity event. But tell us sort of what it was, what went into organizing it, and, and also what, you know, how important is it for Twitch to be associated with giving back to the community? Yeah, it's a that's a big foundational part of what makes Twitch tick, and that's the charitable component. Um, and we started thinking, like, at the beginning of this pandemic, which was March, um, we said, what can we do? What do we do best? And what we do best is bring people together. And there were all these celebrities reaching out saying like, I don't have much to do because I'm mm -hmm. kind of sitting at home, mm -hmm. but wouldn't it be cool like if I was able to engage with our community and, and to do it in a scaled way? And we said, well, why don't we put everybody together? So what we did is essentially, and, and others have picked up on this, iHeart and some others have done it since, mm -hmm. but it's this kind of live from home idea where uh, a bunch of celebrities, many of them music, but also sports stars, and some gamers decide just to do things at home and they'd have like these five or 10 minute increments. That clip you showed there was after about 12 hours and we raised money throughout. And so the idea was, can we get to 2.5 million to give to the COVID UN relief fund? We ended up getting to 2.7 at the end there. Right. And uh, it was really, really good. And, and it turned out to be really fun and raw and engaging and sometimes emotional. And I think the, the things that you saw are that many of the celebrities, all the celebrities are just people too, right? Like they, a couple of them just rolled out of bed. John Legend rolled out of bed. He had his Grammys behind him. But, <laughs> and he rolls out of bed and he starts playing All of Me. And you're like, that's what, this guy can sing at any moment at any time. And then you see yeah. others who couldn't hit notes. And you're like, it's just very raw and emotional, but yeah. they were raising money too. And it just, uh, it was a it was a big thing. And we, we put a lot behind that from a marketing standpoint because we really wanted the communities of Twitch, plural, to really believe in the in in, in the mantra, like to, what what we all stand for, which is to help others. I heard the Charlie Puth story, how he, he struggled to hit his high note in, in that famous song of his. That, that must yeah. have been quite a moment. Yeah, the Charlie moment was interesting because he also just rolled out of bed and he's got a fantastic voice, but he missed the note multiple times in Attention, if you know that song. Mm -hmm. And the last, it maybe 10 or 11 tries and the community was giving it to him. Like they were like, you can't do it. And they were all fans of his, oh they, were my really, God. they were like throwing it at him. And he finally hit it and it was like erupting in cheers and people going crazy oh, and so excited. Cool. And it really like that, uh, Tim, I'm glad you brought that example up because I, I felt like that was 
like the the very ethos of Twitch, which is there's a lot of like uh, emotional support for people within a community because they all share the same ideas, but they'll give it to you if you can't do something right, right? Yeah. So like they'll come at you, but it, it was a it was a great moment at the end. Well, you know, we have a big music program with Clio Music, and we've been writing a lot about you know musicians um, live streaming from home, you know, as mm -hmm. a way to connect with fans when they can't tour and all that stuff. You know, does Twitch want to be like a major destination for live streams by musicians and, and you guys really engaging the industry in that way? Yeah, we are. We're, we're trying to get as many creators to Twitch as we can um, and of all sizes, all shapes and sizes, garage band up to major artists. And uh, the reason for that is because it's a fantastic platform just to engage with your fans. Um, you can do whatever you want. Right. We signed Logic recently. Right. Logic. Good example. Logic. Um, is thinking of retiring <laughs> and becoming just a full-time dad. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to spend a number of days each week on Twitch, engaging with my fans, maybe releasing music that I haven't released or even breaking new music. Who knows? But like to only do it in front of my most vocal fans in a way that like you can have that two-way conversation. I love that. Which, you know, it's really important. Like under 35 gets it a lot more than older 35. So I think Tim, your point earlier is right. But like that whole idea of, of marketing in a two-way uh, operation is so much more effective. It's that old hack a brand idea of just, you've got to allow your community and your audience to be able to engage with you. And that's what a lot of these artists are doing. It's super smart. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. That's something that we're looking to do with Clio Music too, which we'll talk about another time. Yes. Um, and helping out the artists. I mean, it's important, and, but I love that, that they get to hear directly right away from their fans. It's yeah. amazing. Um, you guys started in gaming. You're still uh, big in gaming uh, this past April. You had, again, more celebrities uh, battling in Fortnite, which very cool. How did that come about? And was that the first one that kind of came with celebrities or was that after the fact? And uh, how did that go? <laughs> yeah, good, good question. So this was another idea, right? This was another kind of collab mashup. We did one. The first idea was something called the Streamer Bowl. We did it in January. So before the world fell apart. And it was at the NFL PA party right before the Super Bowl. And the idea was we'd bring NFL athletes together with pro gamers, kind of mash them up and let them play Fortnite together. And we do it for charity. That's and smart. it turned out to be really successful from a growth standpoint for Twitch. We were able to get a significant amount of people that were brand new to Twitch to come on board. And a lot of it is just because that's a really interesting idea of just kind of having athletes and pro gamers play. A lot of times they're yeah. separated, right? So we said, why don't we try that again? So we did it again with something called Super Games which Nicole is what you're referencing. And that happened yeah. in April. And that was another charitable opportunity for the COVID UN fund. Again, we wanted to go back to the well there. The idea on this one though, was that the athletes had to be drafted by the pro gamers. So you ended up in a scenario where usually the athletes are like, I'll choose you, you know, it's like, no, no, no. The gamers will choose you. So they had to advocate for themselves. So the marketing of it had to come through the athletes. And the celebrity, which so was it's like awesome. real fantasy football in a sense. Yeah, though. kind like of was. Really picking them though to play. It totally was, but it wasn't. The, the thing I liked about that idea was it's super authentic because it wasn't, you know, like the brand that's up there. Like, please, you know, watch. It was actually the athletes going, "Please draft me because I'm pretty good at Fortnite," and that's a really interesting way in. So we ended up raising a million dollars on that day as well. That was uh, in April. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then we did it again with FIFA and Premier League athletes in June in Europe, uh, and uh, and same same kind of sponsorship opportunity or, or charitable opportunity rather. And uh, it just it's a interesting collab. Now it's kind of it's there's others that are starting to do this. So the newness so is, that the, is that the same as Summer Game Fest or no? That's that's separate. Oh my God, there she is! There, there you go, the two year old. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We check the tic-tac-toe right there. We get it. Um, so happy right now. You don't know. Yeah, there you go. See, there you go. Speaking of authenticity, she's going to be the best marketer in the house. Um, <laughs> she's listening to what all. <laughs> but um, no, Summer Game Fest was uh, different. And actually, that was another idea we had. We said, you know what? Like Twitch as a virtual platform is really interesting. Um, E3 as a physical event is not going to happen. You'd have a lot right. of swimming bodies at the LA Convention Center. Probably not yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to 20 of those. I said the 21st one won't happen. So why don't we try and do that on Twitch? And so we made our own E3. So Summer Game Fest was our own E3. And we brought the gaming world together for four months, actually. So E3 is usually oh, one God. week. Any of the viewers yeah. know. We did it for four months. We just completed it last week uh, from May until last week. 
And, wow. um, and it was a festival every, almost every day we had something new releases, streamers playing new games. Um, and as you know, like this year for gaming, it's the biggest year in gaming in seven years, we got new consoles launching. And so just another big, big moment for us. Um, and another opportunity to engage with this massive audience. Um, that, that's so amazing to do for four months. Is this something that will stay in the future? Like as live events even come back, is it big I, enough to stay? I think so. I have to tell you, I, even when I was at PlayStation, I was like, why are we still doing this for one week in June in a sweaty box in the Kelly convention center? I don't get it. And that was without even having thought about, you know, could we go to a live streaming platform? And when I come to Twitch a couple of years ago, I was like, we need to do this. And um, we had a couple, we had a couple others that were kind of feeding in thinking like this might be a good idea too. And we kind of were able to put it together. So I think we're going to try and continue it. It just makes no sense. Like, yeah. And also like not to go too deep in that, but it helps the development community as well. Cause developers are like, look, I have to put all my resources to get into one week. Let's spread that out over four months. It gives a lot more flex. So yeah. 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 Well, John, I'd love to dig into kind of how you guys work with brands. I, I believe P and G signed on for the first time with you guys this year. So maybe, Let's look at a spot that uh, they did for Bounty uh, with sure. their integration. Yeah. We'll chat about, chat about that. Bounty mommy, quick, I need help. Yep, yep, on my way. Dash, we're on the way. Come on, guys, we go. <laughs> quick, the quicker picker upper. A spill? No biggie. Woo! Let's go. That's right, chat. You gotta have Bounty at your battle station. My man. Yeah. Let's get back into this. Cover me, cover me. Guys, I'm still knocked over here. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Very, very fun. Um, yeah. Could you kind of tell us the backstory with the PNG relationship and also like where does Spot Like This run on Twitch? Yeah, so, um, and this is PNG, but also broadly, there are a lot of brands that are saying, I don't want to just put the can of Coke American Idol style next to uh, the streamer. I don't, you know, Ninja had Red Bull for a long time. Like, that doesn't necessarily move the needle sales wise. Are there ways that we can engage at a deeper level? And um, I think the realization for many brands is the audience is there. It's so sizable, but it's a, it's a one that you have to be really authentic with. Like it, you will be called out quickly if you just run like a straight line ad. And we've had a lot of those brands come in and try to hammer their, the same kind of campaign that they would do on linear or other digital platforms and try to do on Twitch. It doesn't work well. The one you saw right there actually is, native to the streamer experience and actually it's pretty common, right? Like knock stuff over and there's just- say, It happens happen. all the time, I'm sure. All, yeah. All the time. And so um, that's where you you could say, all right, well, it's an ad, but it's actually one that you're like, okay, like that makes a lot of sense. That's yeah. actually my experience. So that's how, what was born there. Um, we did a campaign with Subway last September for our September, if you get that, um, <laughs> for more subscriptions to our creators. And that was uh, another one that was very uh, tied in tightly to what many people do, which is, you know, fast food or kind of, you know, uh, the idea of having sandwiches and taking breaks and things. We try to really promote away from keyboard opportunities and Subway really afforded that. And so we were able to have a real kind of native campaign there, too. And so um, that's what we're really pushing a lot of brands to think about is. Um, and including gaming brands, by the way, too, is just to think about like, how would you bring this to creators and their community in a way that's usable, right? Like that's authentic to their experience rather than just authentic to the brand ethos of what you're trying to push. Um, you know, that's, it's really, really important. I, I think, um, you know, you, you asked the question about where it, where it runs. We have, um, you know, ads that run throughout the platform that are exceptionally uh, strong movers of uh, business metrics for brands because they run as either a pre-roll on top of what you would stream into or an interstitial. Um, what you what you also tend to see now is you see some streamers actually just do it while they're streaming because they're a eight hour or ten hour a day you know session and they can just talk yeah. through brands that have sponsored them too. Okay, uh, you know I'm wondering about uh, the learning curve for brands. You mentioned that a little bit. I mean brands that are more traditional that are very used to linear advertising. You know. How do you teach them to appreciate community marketing, creator marketing, influencer marketing in a way that doesn't overwhelm them? Because if you go on to Twitch, it can be an overwhelming experience for, you know, for a visitor, for, for a brand marketer. What do you tell them that makes them comfortable? Yeah, uh, your, your latter point there is an important one. Um, Twitch can sometimes be a different language. When you get on there, you're like, whoa, there's a lot happening here. Like, yeah, I've got 8 million channels to choose from and there's all these things and all this chat and 
So it does, I, I usually, when I talk to brands, I tell them, look, I've been in your seat as a CMO, PlayStation, so I know. So what you want to do is you make sure you spend some time yourself personally, get yourself used to this cadence. It's very different than other parts of this marketing landscape. When you do that, the first step is usually to uh, work with our influencer marketing team around one particular creator that um, is in line with your brand, either from a values perspective, uses your product, is someone that would be amenable to what you're trying to do and um, to line up with that person first. Try out with that one streamer first because there are a million and one different ways you can engage. You probably don't want to open with a scaled approach because if you're just becoming, uh, if you're if you're new to Twitch, it's very difficult to figure out. So we try to go from that one and then spread from there. And um, generally that's how a lot of brands engage. You brought up Procter & Gamble. P&G uh, has done that through the years. And then actually sponsored stream aid because they said we've hit that scaled approach now and they actually did it at the parent brand level png which you don't see that often yeah, so cool. that was interesting they felt like they could actually promote themselves much more broadly as a parent brand at that level that is like you you have now reached stage 10 when you've been able to do that so that that was uh you know where you, most brands want to get to okay. but you want to start uh with the single streamer first and you've had a few other brands. I mean, another like State Farm, and can, can you can you mention a few other ones that you? Yeah, That's Verizon's cool. a big one. Verizon's a big sponsor of our esports. Um, okay. yeah, Twitch broadcasts eighty percent of the world's esports, and esports, as you know, is such a massive okay. category. Um, that's a big one. State Farm's a big one. Um, in the gaming world, Activision, EA, obviously mm -hmm. huge with us. Epic, Epic, and Fortnite. You can imagine, right. uh, Riot. So there's there's um, and then and then you know beverage with Coke and a lot of the CPG um, you know Taco Bell and et cetera. So there's a, there's a lot of these um, these brands that are starting to come in and saying, look, I have to make a dent into the millennial and Gen Z audience. Really, the biggest place to do that is with Twitch, but you got to do it carefully. You got to do it in a real um, prescriptive way. Okay. So Twitch's demographic skews 65% male. 35% female, are you looking to bring obviously more females in and how are you doing that? And has that maybe changed from the beginning of COVID to now? Yeah, this is a really good question. So um, broadly, diversity is a really important point for Twitch. As you can imagine, a lot of brands talk about this, but Twitch is a very kind of front and center brand in that you're seeing the results of that diversity and inclusion every single day with the various streamers that you may follow. So um, the uh, growth in female streamers in the past two years has been fairly substantial. We were about an 80-20 brand up until about a year and a half ago, and that's really started to spike. So not all of it, I think, due to the pandemic, but we certainly have seen an influx of creators broadly. Um, and with that, we've seen more women come and stream. Um, we do think overall with all creators that um, everyone has some kind of creative or creator inside of them. It's kind of like the old Nike line. There's an athlete in all of us. There's a creator in all of us. They're really, mm -hmm. you know, a time for everyone to be able to stream their life. I think the, the thing that we've been trying to help, um, particularly in the underrepresented groups is really finding that moment or that, that theme that you want to be able to promote. That's where a lot of creators fall short is like, they think you just turn the camera on, like we got right here and boom, 10 hours a day, but 10 hours a day is a grind. So you've got to actually be able to find what's your theme, what am I, what am I promoting, what kind of community do I want to bring in, and what am I talking about, and that's when you start to see that growth. Um, and and I think the 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 growth that we've tried to promote as much as we can amongst female streamers as well as underrepresented groups is really around the amplification that you know certainly my marketing team can help with. Um, it cuts through some of that discovery issue, um, it, and it gives you know if we're able to uh, connect. Uh, Unrepresented groups with communities. That connection is how you grow and progress well on Twitch. So we've been we've we've had a lot of campaigns, visible and not visible, uh, to do that. Um, and that's so one how, of the how would things. how would you do it for me if I wanted to focus on wine? Like you want to focus on wine? Well, first of all, let me know because I'd like to join that one. Um, I do. Yeah. So, and I will learn this and do this. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'll give as an example. Um, you know, I I personally started streaming about four months ago. And it was just on a whim because we're like, everyone's got a social distance. My sons play travel baseball and none of the parents could go. We're like, why don't we put this on Twitch? And we'll stream this. And it became a huge thing, like huge, right? But like a big <laughs> thing in, the, in my community here right. because they're like, oh, this is great. And people from international and other 
states and stuff, grandparents were able to watch. And, and so what you, you have to market yourself in some ways. So in your case, like if you have a community of, of friends or family that are really interested in that same theme, you'd want to be able to like, Hey, I'm going live here. Um, you know, please watch when you get to 50 followers and doesn't mean subscribers get to 50 followers. All of a sudden you click into a monetization. component, And that is when people start going, Oh, wait a minute. Actually, this isn't a career yet, but I can actually do something with this beyond just bringing people together. When you start getting to 100 followers and beyond, you start putting some time into it. You start seeing in many places, people go, well, maybe there's a career here for me. I can actually put some time. But there is a grind. And so you need to actually be able to have that theme. For you, I think in the, from a marketing standpoint, we'd want to amplify it. Certainly, like the front page of Twitch is one of those places where you end up getting tons of visibility. And a lot of people try things that are on those shelves. And right. so... You know, Nicole, if you came to me, I'd say absolutely we would help you out and we'd put put you on there and then we'd see how you'd go. You would accrue a lot of followers. And then as you go, you'd be like, hmm, this is interesting. I don't want you to leave your day job. I like I, I like working with you. <laughs> I think but, I could um, do both. But so you I could do both, maybe. Maybe exactly. you could, yeah. It's very interesting. <laughs> but it's actually a lot of fun. Since it really she's is. doing the show, she she can probably uh she'll probably make it happen. You're pretty good at it. I don't know. You guys both. <laughs> yeah. So, John, uh, I know it's hard to predict anything at the moment, but could you kind of look ahead the next six to 12 months of Twitch and sort of, you know, what's next for you guys? And also, does your marketing change, you know, when COVID subsides? Yeah, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, I've been really trying hard not to do the sad piano music and saying we're all staying home because I think every brand has done that. And to me personally, I think it's not effective. Um, I think everyone knows the situation we're in. I think the I, I try to go more to the emotive benefits and the things that we're going to be promoting and you'll see in campaigns moving forward is really around how we can bring people together at this time and just, mm -hmm. and actually uh, build. How can we become better and build together as communities? They may be micro communities, maybe huge, maybe ninjas communities, but they, we, we build together. We do things inclusively. So you'll see that. I think from a content perspective, you're going to see a lot around esports. Esports is massive and only growing and there's a lot of time spent there. Um, we're investing heavily in music, which we talked about. And then there's sports. And I think the sports side is really interesting because you see a real strong connection between gaming and sports. You see it between gaming and music, too. Those are the two real strong bonds. If you're looking at any any brand, uh, those bonds really matter. Mm -hmm. We haven't done as much on the sports side. We will. We just finished sponsoring Allegiant Stadium for the Raiders. Um, and uh, and so that's uh, <laughs> when we get fans back there, we'll uh, be able to introduce everyone to the Twitch Lounge, which is a huge esports facility inside the stadium. But there's going to be a lot of effort there, I think, as we go here in the next 12 months. Okay. Hopefully, life starts to get back to normal. But I think Twitch is going to actually end up continuing to sing really well because it's just become that natural place for people to find others like them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Before we go, can we meet any of your beautiful children that I see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bring them Peter, on. Come, come on. on. Yeah. Come on over for a sec. So this? Peter's ready for the uh, NFL games to start tonight. Awesome. Uh, yeah, nice. You look that? great. Yeah. Right. yeah. Go Niners. Yeah, Niners, there you go. He's taking a break from school, clearly playing some PS4 behind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're done with school at 11, huh? Wow. Love to talk that about that. That is awesome. That is so great. Thank you so much for your time today. We love talking to you. I think everyone's going to love understanding more, so we're really excited yeah. for it. Um, and hopefully we can stay in touch because I really am excited about this wine show. I, I'm going to watch for sure. And uh, yeah, thank you both for the time. It's really great. And I, and I obviously have loved serving on the jury in the past and uh, look forward you. to the future. We appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thank yeah. you. All right. Bye. That was awesome. I've learned a lot. I look forward to your show. I'm very excited for my show since we didn't really do much here on brand with my wine <laughs> tastings, but that is pretty amazing. I think it's so amazing what they're doing. And then the, the charity aspect to me is just takes it to that next level. 100%. You know, but yeah. awesome talk. Thanks, Tim. Good to see you, Nicole. Thank you guys for watching. For the latest in creativity every day, visit musebycleo.com. And of course, we're back here every Thursday with new episodes of On Brand. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.